This is the Amp Hour Podcast. Released October 25th, 2020. Episode 514. Focus, damn it. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Contextual Electronics. Focus, damn it. <laughs> you saying that to me? <laughs> you, you, you talking to me? You talking to me? <laughs> you talking to me? <laughs> I've already decided that that probably should be the title and the first thing we talk about. Yeah, as we, yeah. we just got into this before the show yeah, and we you're, mar- you're already disagreeing with me, weren't you? You're, you're about to launch into it. No, no, I right. will have points of disagreement only because I'm going to try and defend myself, but I think actually Excellent. your premise is right. So this all came up because... But I am, I hang on, I am one yeah. of you, though. Rem- remember that. I am one of you. I am one of these uh-huh. generalists, so... Okay, right, right. Yeah, so we're yep. going to get back to that yep. generalist versus specialization. That That's kind of the discussion that's coming here. So yeah, you know, bingo cards out, but... Anyway, how did this uh, come about? Yeah, so I have been working with this guy, Bilal, on firmware stuff, uh, and he's like, young guy found him on Upwork, really, really great developers. And he got like my ABC board, like up and running on Zephyr, like in like two weeks, three weeks. Like it was, it's been really, really a great experience. And like, he's been doing Zephyr for most of his career. So, you know, like Zephyr is a new thing, but like, he's like really into it. And so Dave brought this up. He's like, well, yeah, he's like focused on this one thing and he's really good at it. And it's like, oh yeah, you know, like, and I think that is, that is a strong point in, or that's a strong in strong favor of focusing. I just I'm not usually like that, so that's why I'm like <laughs> against the focus damn it idea. We're both pretty much generalists, aren't we? I would oh, consider yeah, my yeah. I would definitely consider myself a generalist, even mm-hmm. when I was a full time PCB designer, right? Yeah, right. And that's pretty much mostly all I was doing every day was mm-hmm. PCB design. Right. I, right. I, I still consider myself a generalist. Right. right? Well, you so, you didn't yeah. you didn't stay doing PCB design. You didn't you know do only oh, PCB no, design no, no. prior to that, right? But that's like what a super focused person would do, right? They were like, well, I just, I do exactly. this one thing and like, I'm great at it. Like I will, I will kill it. But like, yeah, that's all I do. And uh, yep. I think, I think that is actually one of the arguments against it in the beginning is because you get pigeonholed a little bit, you know, like if you, oh, of course. If you can't, yeah. so like assume, so like Bilal is a great example of like picking this thing that's up, up and coming and he's a really good at it. And like, I'm very excited for him. I think it's actually gonna be very, a, a great path because it seems like like Zephyr you know obviously I'm no one's surprised here if you've been listening to the past shows I'm very excited about Zephyr right well actually can you explain I have no idea what Zephyr is I've heard lots of people actually I've seen quite mm. a few people say oh yeah I'm a Zephyr specialist what what the hell is it I don't know on the it's video. a it's a it's a real-time operating system right so like free RTOS or like thread no not thread x uh, nut x or like, I don't know, uh, what is it, Micro C OS 2 or yep. Micro C Linux. I, what, no, what was that? The Micrium, whatever Micrium made, and they've been since bought, right? Yep. And so like they're all basically real-time OSs are smaller versions of operating system. Usually you, it's not full-blown Linux. We were talking, we'll talk a little bit about Jay Carlson's thing a little later, but like it's not full-blown Linux. It's Real time, so usually it's deterministic. There's semaphores and mutexes and all these different things. I've been talking about this this RTOS book that I've been reading, uh, and it's been really great. But the idea is Zephyr is a. I'm going to probably botch this too. <laughs> so uh, one of the Zephyr people was actually on Embedded. Well, I'll link that in, and she talked about it a bunch. She was great. And so basically, Zephyr is kind of like among different groups now. So like uh, Nordic supports it, ST supports it. There's basically it pulls in the SDKs from all these different companies, right? So ST Nordic, uh, Intel. Actually, so this all started because Intel bought Wind River, I think. And right. whatever the thing was, whatever it was called before that, that's where the, the core of this started. Then the Linux Foundation got involved. And the idea is basically it's a it's a open source shared ecosystem now. So now Intel makes a board support package and all the SDK stuff that goes along with it. Nordic does the same thing. ST does the same thing. And now when I go in and basically when I go and I compile a Blinky example, right? So this is something I just did the other day and I was very excited mm. about it. I compile a Blinky example. All I say is target the Nordic NRF52840DK, like the development kit board. 
and it knows everything to pull in because there's all of the there's all of this like abstraction layers on top of it. It knows everything to pull in. Yeah. The blinky the blinky file is all the same, right? It's 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 talking to LED zero, right? And LED mm-hmm. zero is mapped mm-hmm. to the pin on NRF D fifty two eight forty DK, yeah, pin thirteen or whatever. But it might be pin four hundred seventy five on an Intel board. It might be pin thirty seven on an ST board. But the idea is that it's all abstracted out of there. So LED zero is is already it's under the hood, and then it compiles all the required stuff. It pulls in all the SDKs that are required builds everything up all of the object files it links it all all together it builds this thing there's even a it even could tie into the the uh, flash loader that's in there you type in this you know this high level west build and it does the build you type um, type in west flash and it downloads it to your board now of course this is if you have everything set up and you know we'll just ignore that yep. for now but the idea is that it's at the at the level at the application level of like writing a blinky program it's the same right and now you go and write mm-hmm. a bluetooth program and it's the same and you you know and this is very very high level and you know optimistic but there's a lot of work to get it well uh, this sounds like oh, what all you're talking about has nothing to do with a real-time operating system it's a cross hardware platform extraction uh, abstraction layer yeah. pretty yes. much the fact that it's uh, a real-time operating system th- is is doesn't really come into it i think the reason I mean, there are very much elements in there, right? So you're doing a Bluetooth thing now and you, you need to have all of the RTOS elements in there, right? So mm-hmm. the semaphores and the, you know, the, the scheduling of threads and all this stuff. And and that that's when I think of, when I think of like RTOS is, is basically all of the scheduling and the things that need to happen. Is there any point of using Zephyr if you don't use the real-time aspects to it? That's a good question. I don't know. I so like the reason I look at it, I'm just looking at purely at popularity, right? <laughs> this right. is me. This is me hitching my wagon to the to the cool kid at, at school. You know, like this is that's literally all I. That was like the majority of my. You know, I'm interested in generally, but like kind of looking at support and looking at all the things, looking at momentum of where things are going. That's why I'm interested in it. It's very, very possible that at some point in the future it's going to take a right turn. You know, Nordic bails, Intel bails, all these people bail, and it just flops. Right? That has happened before. Mm-hmm. It could happen again. But I'm optimistic. You know, this is Chris. I'm always optimistic. Uh, <laughs> and so the fact that it's not like that I don't need an RTOS in a Blinky example, it doesn't mean that I won't need one in the future. And when uh, Eli was on the show a couple of weeks ago, you know, he was talking about like he, he, had, he had been sat down at a conference and someone said, look, you can, you know, if you have, I think the example was like a one stoplight town, it's not a big deal. But if you have thousands of people now you need more traffic lights you need more i think that was the right. the analogy he gave which is great right i mean because like yeah i mean you can handle all the stuff when it's blinky and it's simple and it's like low level yeah that's fine but you start doing wi-fi and bluetooth and cellular oh, no. and laura and all this other crap and it's like okay you need more stuff there the wheels start falling off the billy cart yeah exactly and like so i've used what's the board called i, I have it up there somewhere it's called a oh, PyCom. So PyCom is like a micro Python based, you know, it's on ESP32 and it's got all this other stuff. And it's kind of, it's not bolted together, but it's like, it's this really high level language and it's really nice for demos, but then like to explore it and use it in a product, it's like, okay, now it's like you're using something that's not designed for that system. Whereas like an RTOS, like Zephyr or something similar, like, again, please excuse my lack of knowledge. I'm kind of learning this as we go along, but with Zephyr, it's kind of designed for your specific hardware, but that the high level application level layer rather is more customizable. I think. Right. Did any of that make sense? Yes, it does. Totally. Okay, great. It's just that that's like, I thought it was just an Artos. And then all of a sudden you went off on this huge right. yeah, yeah, yeah. tangent about how it's a multi cross platform hardware abstraction layer tool. Right. And that's, I think that's the, yeah, that probably is a good, a good delineation too, because that's the reason that, you know, that that's where the momentum comes from is like, okay, Nordic's throwing a bunch of engineers at it and ST's throwing a bunch of engineers at it. And like right. all these NXP has a bunch of engineers thrown at it. And it's like, so you start to have this, like all of these people that are jumping in and kind of contributing to it it's like you're going to get other features built into it and so in yeah. rtos like free rtos right you can pull in an sd card reader right that's like a right. simple kind of thing you can set up a fat file system you can pull that mm-hmm. in but it's not as vetted and it's not as like 
kind of out there. It's not as like uh, improved upon and like, you know, you're, you're pulling in this thing. Yeah. You get the SD card reader for quote unquote free, but like it's not vetted by all of the different vendors and it's, you know, you might have to port it to your system. And whereas if the underneath layer, if it's all abstracted, the high layer, it's like, okay, I want to write to an SD card but hang but then on. The underneath layer. Yeah. If somebody, let, let's say somebody from Nordic writes an SD card layer because they have an SD card thing on their dev kit or whatever. Right. And then, uh-huh. and then it's implemented into Zephyr. <laughs> if I'm using the correct terminology, right? So then all this, so then technically it's available, but, but then how does then, and then it become auto magically available on the other hardware platforms? Does then, do then all the other vendors have to go, oh, Nordic's added, ST's gone, oh, Nordic's added this. I need mm-hmm. to make sure it's compatible, that SD library is compatible with our yeah. things. How does it all like, so like the management at the, so there's like, you know, there's an actual project and a foundation that's like, there's like the Zephyr project that does all this stuff. And okay. Right. Someone is in control of all the, the pull requests. So like today, so Bilal has been working on this BG95, which is the modem I have on board, right? There's no support yeah. for it, but he was able to find some code that was out there that was used for another thing. And he pulled it in and he's porting it to Zephyr, right? Today he submitted a pull request and that functionality will actually at a pretty high level, I think will get pulled up, it, you know, it's a pull request for Zephyr. And it's mm-hmm. possible that now the work that he's doing will be reusable by other people. So now they try and implement, uh, you know, an right. interface to a BG95 modem. All they have to do is say, hey, here's my serial port that I'm talking to this modem with. And like, that's that's the quote unquote magic. It's not actually magic. Right. Right? There's there's okay. a lot of troubleshooting there, but this is how I understand it so far. Okay. But, you know, it's like cool. you're pointing at peripherals that are like, so in, in the SD card example, right? Usually SD cards are, spy based right not always but the way i've seen them right yep. and so you would point you'd say like okay i have my SD. for example probably yeah so like the, the fat file system i think would be higher and then i think that it'd be like okay your fat file system is talking to the actual sd card you do that at the spy layer and so you'd yep. be like oh spy is on pins you know 13 14 15 16 right, right. four pins for and spy. everyone's going to have support for spy right exactly. so yep. yep right and you might have special pins there and you have to deal with that but so then that's how it becomes auto magically available across all mm-hmm. Yeah. platforms yeah yes yep got it so my first exposure to this was actually a different project which i'm also very excited about i was i helped with the hardware initially and it's public enough now that i think i can talk about it if not we're going to be editing this out uh, <laughs> uh but beagleboard is working on a zephyr port as well for one of the ti chips and for a very exciting thing for uh gray bus so i think they've said enough out there that i could talk about that if not like i said i'll be Who's Graybus? Graybus is from Pro- remember Project Aura? No. Remember it was like the Google Google phone where you like plug on modules? Oh God. Oh yes. Yeah, yes. right. It, it flopped. It's like a like a, it's yeah, a cool yeah, concept, course. but like from an actual right. hardware perspective, it's really tough because of like the cost of doing of, that, of interoperability, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the idea is basically you have this interoperable bus that basically kind of just self configures and that's about as much as I understand about it. I'll have Jason mm-hmm. back on. So Jason Kreitner is the head of BeagleBoard. I'll have him, back, have him back on to talk about all this. But it's very, very exciting. And if people are interested in Zephyr and all that stuff, I'll point them at BeagleBoard. And that's probably all I should say because otherwise we'll cut out too much of the episode. All right. So uh, back to focus. Yes. <laughs> which we've been so focused. <laughs> yeah, right. Focus, damn it. And? So what? What about yes. it? I mean, well, the whole no, no, I'm saying you should have said yeah. focus, no, it, damn it, to me. You, you were know? saying, we're, we're talking about finding like a one in a thousand person who's like, yeah. you know, better than a thousand other people, right? They're yeah. so good at something, at this right. one specific thing. And I'm going, right, you probably can't get to that level and um, mm-hmm. being a generalist, like doing it part time. You have to be hyper focused on yeah. that. I'd say it's pretty rare for an individual to be that one in a thousand. Yeah, I think almost almost by definition, right? It's like yep. you, you know how how are you going to stand out from other people? You're going to practice it more unless you're like so naturally gifted that yep. like. But I feel like that's you know if you read that book, grit. It's not. But it's not a guarantee. Just being focused. Yeah. I know people who are hundred percent focused on mm-hmm. something. That's all they do all day, every day, and they still. Well, I'm not going to say they suck at it, but they're not sure. hyper productive. They're not the top. What is they're what not, is the exactly. area of a specialization? What. Is it like something where the field is so big that they couldn't get to the top anyways? Like there's a, you know billions of people doing it? Like what is the... 
No, it's just like I know PCB layout people who are, that's their hyper, you know, that's all they ever oh, okay. do. But they're just sure. not, you know, I, I wouldn't say they're a standout at it or they're not particularly quick at it. They're not efficient at it. They're not, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't, just because you do something every day doesn't make you, it means you can yeah. do it, right. right? But it doesn't yeah, yeah. make you that one in a thousand hyper productive individual. Yeah. All I'm thinking right now, Dave, is like, is like, you're leading me right into like me talking about my self help books. Oh man, like this is just like this oh, is like God. a Venus flytrap for, oh, for, for self help books. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it doesn't automatically. You know, you can you can program every day. It doesn't right. mean that you're a world class programmer, right? That's right? You can just be a mediocre programmer and that's your job, right? Yep. It's yep. like. Yep. Yeah, it it requires a different level of abstractive thinking. You can play chess every day of your That's life, right. practice ten hours a day. You you're not going to beat Gary Kasparov, right? That's right. I mean, yep. it's just you know, it's one of those things. And let me tell you, Gary Kasparov is in a lot of these self help books that I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he's in there for a reason. And yeah, yeah. But but on the op- on the flip side of that. I, I, you know, I don't think you're going to become those one that one in a thousand hyper productive person without doing it every day. Yeah, I don't know if that's the other end of the spectrum, but I, I, I mean, I, I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think they are, they are very concurrent. Just because you've done right? something, yeah, it, just because you've done something a couple of times, or you've, you know, uh, doesn't, you know, even yeah, if you're like right, the, like super, you know, your IQ's off the charts, and you're just absolutely, yeah, IQ. you know, it's just, yeah. <laughs> You know. Yeah, I think I think it's like I think it's targeted targeted improvement, right? So like, I feel like I use Greg Davil as an example a lot, but Greg Davil, let me tell you, that guy is really good at assembly. I called him the MJ of home assembly the other day, like Michael <laughs> right. Jordan. And yeah. uh, but like Greg is practicing all the time, right? And right. Uh, and and improving, you know, like he's not like so. I I wouldn't say rest. You know, people don't necessarily like so the the uh, layout example you gave, like mm-hmm. there's. Like, are they going to classes and trying to get better or faster or like targeted practice at, at that one thing? I would think that that would be the thing that would, if they're doing that targeted practice and then they're still not improving and they're still not moving towards the top, whatever that, you know, top is, that would then be surprising to me. But if you just do it every day, yeah, I don't know. But I'm also talking about productivity as well. Okay. There's like, you know, there's this um, theory out there I can't, uh, remember who it's you know subscribed to or whatever, but uh, basically says that you know like the top you know five percent of people you know in a company do like ninety percent of the work or something you know it, it, it's 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 some enormous thing. Oh, this is like the uh, the ten X engineer. That's I think that that's right. what you're going towards. Okay. The ten X engineer yep. is a is a fun meme on Twitter. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. I haven't seen it because they're always a holes. You know that's that's usually the right. You know so okay. like. So they talk about, this is a big thing in like software. They talk about the 10X engineer of like one, you know, like one yeah, 10X yeah. engineer has the output of 10 other engineers, right? There, yes, sometimes right. there are these people, but the way it's become a meme is just that it's like, everybody thinks that they're that person and usually they're not. They're just the name. They're usually, you know? no, exactly. They're just, you know, <laughs> ordinary. And it's, yeah, yeah. No, that's due to, and I don't think you can, I'm not going to say you can't learn to become that, but it's more like it's inherent in your nature that mm-hmm. you're going to be that sort of hyper-productive person, mm-hmm. right? Not everyone, even though you've got the same amount of experience, you've gone the same courses, you've learned the same stuff, you've had the same experience, someone is just going to be 10 times more productive than you are because you're, I don't know, you're inherently lazier, you're inherently less focused. You're still very good, mm-hmm. but you're not as productive as that other person, right? Got it. Even though yeah. you can be on the same skill level, someone can actually just be more productive at it than you. So, yeah. 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 I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess it is, it comes down to like footing, right? Like, so like if you're starting from, so like, okay, you and I assume you and I are working together, right? Yep. And someone says to us, Dave, Chris, can you both go and do this layout and see who's done first? I would assume that you would be done first. Like I just, I would assume that because you've just done, you have that experience and you have that, Whatever, At right my, now, when I was, yeah, when I was doing it every day. Sure, oh yeah, sure. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Right. But you, so that's like the same. Out, so I would say that I could potentially do the same kind of 
like final output, right? So say mm -hmm. we're doing like some, you know, controlled impedance routing of this thing, right? I could do it maybe slower than you, but I think what you're saying is the the same two people could have the same output, but one of them will do it more efficiently, faster, that kind of That's thing. That's right? what I'm saying, yes. Right. And and it's the focus, you're saying it's the focus of that task, that specific task that gives that advantage. I I'm not necessarily I'm not saying it that fo you can't just focus on it and become that person. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it is a requirement to have that focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. The focus is not the guarantee of you becoming that 10 times one in a thousand or one in a hundred engineer or, or whatever who's hyper productive. I think that's right. a part of that is inherent in your nature. Some people right. just aren't built that way. Hmm. So maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now people it's time are different, when I'm going to talk. You know, if you if you haven't like, realized, people are totally in different. Your, uh, you're right, right, right. <laughs> right? <laughs> Even though they have the same skill and education level, they can yeah, be totally think, different. Right, I think you're totally right, and I think it's yeah. you know it's also drive, and it's also you know like why why are you moving faster? Right, are you trying to, so like so I've been talking to Jeff Kaiser a lot lately because he he's been doing consulting stuff, and like Jeff is like the most meticulous engineer I have ever met, and like I might be faster than him, but but it's kind of like those stitch and nine saves time kind of thing. Like Jeff might right. spend more time on it up front, but it's going to be right, you know? And like, I might get mm -hmm. it done faster, but then like, is it done, done? You know what I mean? Like that's, yeah, yeah, so that's kind of the, yep. that's the, the, the might, might be difference there. And, and there might be, there's trade-offs as well that like, maybe the speed is more important or more the, maybe the quality is more important. Like I think about at Keithley when I was there, you know, some of these engineers would spend six months on a, a board layout. Because the revs were so expensive right. and the, you know, it was so important to get it right. It was so hard to track these things down. It was mm -hmm. like six months to do a single rev of a board because you had to, you had to get it right. Of course. Like that's crazy, but that's crazy to me. Like now, like you're thinking about <laughs> right. that now and, but it's just like different inputs, different outputs kind of thing. Well, that's the art of engineering because the art of engineering yeah, right. is, is trading off, you know, like, is yeah. it, do we just need good enough? Like from yeah. one project to the next can be very different. I've worked on projects where oh, good enough is good enough, sure, right? Sure. Whereas like, no, others require absolute, absolute perfection mm -hmm. and you need to spend a week choosing the correct screw, That's right? <laughs> right? That's just, right. Like, yeah. seriously. Yeah. You know, no, know. Yeah, um, I, otherwise I, I know. it's otherwise the whole thing's just going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, yeah, it, you know, that is the art of engineering. So there's no general rule. There's no general, you know, or wh wh which is the best approach. It's always the art of, you know, choosing the most appropriate, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see books, books that I like here, books that I like here. Let's, let's, let's just do a little, little, a little commercial brought to you by Chris's reading list. Uh, Ultra learning by Scott Young. That's a good one. Basically, if you're trying to get better at something like, and you want to like meta analysis of like how to like get better and like targeted improvement, that's great. A book that I, I did not like that a lot of people recommended to me was Range, Why Generalists Tri Triumph in the Specialized World. So this might be an argument for this conversation of like focus. I thought the Range, the range book was just like, it was blather. I mean, it was just like, <laughs> oh, look right. at Tiger Woods versus uh, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, come on, just give, it, give me a point here. You know, I love books yeah, that are like right. super prescriptive ultra learning was one of them range was not so uh first 20 hours that's another like fast learning kind of book by josh kaufman and what was the last one i was going to put i'm just looking at my my amazon list here uh i don't remember where to go ah mastery by george leonard that's another good one so like that's about like how to you know work towards becoming like a master in something right you need to have targeted practice that kind of thing so yep. those are my book recommendations for this week. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> so I cut you off. What, what were you going to say? Sorry. Of, I can't remember now what I was going to oh, say. Sorry. sorry. Oh. Anyway, that's it. More books that's for me. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I think, I think this is a good discussion, but like, I think, uh, I think it's tough well, it's, at the it's, beginning. It's like, endless. It's endless. it's endless, of course, of course. But I think the tough thing is like, so, okay, so now someone younger is listening to us saying this and we're like, yeah, you got to focus if you want to be really, really successful. And it's like, you know, there are risks to that, right? Oh, I can remember what I was going to say. Okay. The, the victor is the one, the victor in engineering is the one who gets the job done. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. I mean, oh, ultimately, like whether yeah. or not that is the long game or the short game. 
Like the, the, the long game could be the person who got it done and then there were no issues six, for, you know, six months later. Whereas mm -hmm. the victor, you know, could be, oh, the person who got it done this week for the trade show. Holy shit, right. done. You're right. a genius. Right, right, right. You yeah, know? what's done, right? right? I mean, define done. I think that's a great, that's a great point. Yeah. So, mm hmm. But often that's only with hindsight. Because as I said, like you could um, like design something, get it done. And then six months when it's out in the field in six months. And then your, your boss is like, hey, we're going to production. And you're like, oh, that, that we shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah, no. And it's like, why did you do that? Like, why right, didn't right. you see this? It's like, right. you know, like then you're, then you're public enemy number one. You're the worst engineer ever because you missed mm -hmm, this fundamental mm -hmm. thing, right? Yeah. Because you were yeah, too totally. hyper-focused on something else or whatever. Right. Yeah. So anyway. have we gotten to the point of do, should people focus, damn it, or no? I'm saying it's a requirement to become that if you have aspirations of being that one Got in it. a thousand hyper productive person, you mm -hmm. can't do it without the focus. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But focus does not guarantee that you'll yes. become I think, really exceptional at something. Right. I think that's right. And I, I yep. One of the things I think was in that grit or in that, uh, that, uh, one of the books, it was like giving like Tom Brady as an example of like, oh, well, he didn't play. Tom Brady. You know, Tom Brady is a foot, sorry, American football quarterback, very famous, right. won a lot of Super Bowls. And it was like, yep. oh, well, he didn't focus on football as a kid. He didn't start playing until he was like late in high school. And yet he was like one of the best quarterbacks ever. I'm sorry for anyone who hates the Patriots. I don't care. Um, right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, and, but yeah, so that's a, kind of like a counter example there. But at the same time, like when he was into it, he was like really into it. And I think that's another point that brings it up too, right? Is so you listen to podcasts with Tom Brady and he's like, Hey, look, I may not have been the best at the beginning, but I kept working on it. And I think that's another thing too. Is like, you think about mm -hmm. the incremental progress. If you keep getting better and better, you know, if you keep spending time, like refocusing on your, your, you know, home assembly or your layout or your programming or whatever, you are going to get better over time, and it's yeah, usually you're going those to get small better. steps. You know, but it doesn't guarantee but you're going to be the best. Does never, yeah. I don't think anything yeah. guarantees that because yeah. a lot of that, a lot of that uh, athletics. You know, we, when you talk about athletes of any, almost any mm -hmm. description, yeah. you know, yeah. it comes down to innate talent, not only innate talent, but also innate physiology oh, as well. Luck, you know, like they talk about, you know, yeah. how many people are going to beat Usain Bolt. Right. right. No, right. There, there's a physiological reason why the man runs as fast as he does. It's not yeah, just because he was, you know. Right. I right. no. I agree. There was actually example. another example. There was another example of that too. I forget what book it was in, but it was. I think this might have been an audio book. That's why I'm not seeing it. But it was giving the example of like if you look at Michael Phelps versus I forget the guy's name who won like the 5,000 meter, whatever. You know, like the, physiologically they are very different. Michael Phelps is just like you know he's the swimmer. Sorry, the gold medal swimmer swimmer from the U.S. Yep. He's like won a ton of medals. He is like all, you know, super short legs, super long torso, right? And then right. you compare him to this like marathon runner guy or long distance runner guy, and like he's just all legs, you know, like and they're I think yeah, they're the right. same height or something like that. It was like some like really great comparison. So yeah, right. I've got a great example, Nick Kyrgios, who's an Australian tennis player. Have you have you heard uh, of him? Uh, sounds familiar. Not, not really into tennis. Anyway, he's like yeah. one of the world's best tennis players. Like he's up in probably the top 10 at the moment or something. Yeah. And I think, don't quote me on this, but he was on the Joe Rogan podcast recently or something. I don't know. Anyway, okay. he was, he was talking about how he just basically, he does not have a coach, right? Where he's mm. in the top 10 in the world in tennis. He does not have a coach. He is mm. not stretched. In ten, he okay. doesn't do any stretching in ten years. This is like unheard of, right? Yeah, that's weird. And the guy, it, the, the guy basically just goes out there and does it, right? And he's yeah. top ten in the world and doesn't even have a coach, right? Imagine how good he could be. I feel like that's a counter example, though, right? I mean, like th that's, no, no, yeah, I it's because he's physiologically, you know, gifted. Like he's built to play tennis. You know, yeah. and and I feel like there's always just... there's always sub stories there though. You know what I mean? Like, there's oh always yeah, I'm sure there are. Yeah, yeah right? but... it's not like he's just like walking on the court. He's not like Happy Gilmore, like walking on the golf course and hitting a 400 yard drive, right? Adam Sandler movie. No. Yeah, but you just All get right. exceptional people like that who can do it without, yeah. uh, seemingly without the hard. Well, I'm not saying he hasn't worked hard, right? But there's <laughs> others that work ten times harder. They've got yeah, coaches right, for right. every aspect right. of their performance. They're, they're trying to nail down each point one percentage improvement. 
right? He just doesn't care. Right. Chris Gamble, the the aspirational <laughs> figure skater, is never going to be a top <laughs> right. world. To, you know, I started, you know, my current age and start doing it. It's like, yeah, I might get decent, but I'm not. Yeah, you're right. I'm not going to be yeah. a top figure skater. And I think no, athletics yeah, does it's, and it's like he out. he just doesn't care. He just yeah. like he simply seems to just turn up. You know, he is has fun and turns up and he wins. Like I don't think shit. that's a great example. I I think that's a yeah that's that is an example. I think that's like one of those ones where it's outlier type thing. You know. Well, that's why I pointed out because it's an outlier. Oh, it's see, because you know it's like yeah. it, like he didn't get there by hyper focusing and mm. being you know trying to improve every single aspect of every single part of the game. Yeah. Right, he he got there. I'm gonna rename this show from Focus Damn It to Chris and Dave Talk Sports. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh, man. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's an interesting right. topic. I think. Yeah, I think. I yeah. think your premise is great. I'm gonna keep trying to improve myself. Oh yeah, I'm not saying don't improve yourself. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like holy crap, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying at all. I think the uh, I think the interesting thing is like expectation too like that top in the yeah. world like okay exceptional people exist just accept yeah. it right yeah and totally. yeah and work on yourself i think th- i think that's you know, as hard as you try you you may not be you know odds are you're not going to be that you know elon musk you're not going to be right, that exceptional right. person right? this is actually exactly the thing that i said online today is i'm not going to oh. become greg davil right at yeah, home right. assembly i'm going to be chris gamble getting better at home assembly <laughs> right, that's what I said. Okay. But I think it's important too, like especially in the internet. I think it's really important because you know it's easy. You know, Greg, I use this as an example because you know he's great, right? But like, that it's so easy to see like all these projects online, all these people doing all these things, and it's like you know you don't always see the whole story behind it, and so it's easy to mm. kick yourself and say, "Oh, I'm never going to be like that." It's like, well, no, it's just work towards it. Work on you know small, you know, small improvements, and I think that, you know, I think that's it's, it is possible. It's just you know you got to then find your way towards it, right? Of course. Yeah. Yep. Uh, as an All example right. of this, uh, our guest next week, something we already brought up here, is Jay Carlson. And Jay Carlson is a bit of, so if people don't know, he was the one who did the $1 microcontroller. And he just released an amazing article called, So You Want to Build an Embedded Linux System. And holy moly, he built 10 embedded Linux systems and he talks through all of the pluses and minuses of these different chipsets. And like he built them all up and he built like 35 prototypes and yeah, we'll be talking to him next week, but like it is. Oh, I didn't see that he actually uh, physically built the. Oh, oh okay, yeah. right, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he talks about the routing of the memory and stuff like that. Well, as as an example, Jay was supposed to be on the show mid August, uh, and he just finished. So, <laughs> right, I was I was, yeah. was going to say like, yeah, how long did it take to write just just write the article, let alone do all the oh, stuff yeah. like all the hardware and software behind this required. Yeah. Holy yep. shit. Does does he have a point of doing this? Is this his like day job? Because this is like j- just nope. the sheer amount of work. I'm stunned. Oh, it's it's a ton right? of work. Yeah. I mean, like I th- I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll ask him next week. It's uh, and I guess people can submit questions. We'll put up a, a question thread too. It I think was just because it was the next thing to do. You know, like I I mean, he's built. He says at the beginning of the article, like he's building more and more, throwing more Linux systems at problems. Right. Like, and I think from an industrial perspective is actually great uh, i got to ask some questions to him you know on uh the consulting forum and like it yeah it's just you know when you have everything has a display everything has a whatever and you need to keep it cost constrained and you know he's actually kind of does not like a lot of the modules you can buy like the industrial modules he said aren't worth it and it's like oh well i disagree right. personally because the cost of it but well t- i'll ask him about it next week but like and it's kind of like the cost of ownership type thing but like at the same time i don't have mm. the skills that he has so there would be a ton of cost that would be overhead to get to the point where he is maybe something. Oh yeah. God, no, I'd, I'd happily pay for some, you know, I'd happily pay 500 bucks for some, you know, module <laughs> that just worked. Right. Right. If I know, yeah, no, yeah. yeah seriously, like, even if I'm making a hundred or something, right. If mm-hmm. it's a specialized industrial thing, we've talked about this many times over the years is that mm-hmm. you can, you know, it, it's worth paying the money. Yeah. You talk about making test stands, right. That was a, that was a great, oh, yeah. great example. Yeah, right? exactly. You know, you're, you're yeah. making, you know, 10 or a hundred, of these items, yes. I think this is moving into production, moving into thousand, ten thousand. Oh you know, no, right? yeah, of course. Yeah, industrial no, volumes can get there, of course. So yeah, I yeah. think that's that's a great great question to have. Like, why do this versus that other thing? And because basically, I always say like, when you're buying a module or you're buying a product off the shelf like that, you're basically paying for someone to yell at. You know, <laughs> right? Target <laughs> and, uh, market matters. 
Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, you know, it's it's everything. Yeah, like yeah, you you agree. wouldn't do you wouldn't go to you know this effort using one of these if you just wanted you know to build one or you know a few of. Well, something, he built one. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. right? Yeah, if you're not doing it for the academic exercise, right? You know, yeah, you would exactly. buy it off the shelf, whatever. Yeah, I think no, I think so, that's that's a great point. Anyways, it is extremely long. Uh, I found a plugin that I love. It's a, a a Chrome plugin called Send to Kindle. This worked great with it, and it, it generates about 130 Kindle pages as like a, as as an example. Uh, and I've been reading it at night, and it just working through it, and it's been yeah, it's, it's really so. Good, so you sent this article to your Kindle. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. hundred th- And it turned into 130 pages. <laughs> That's right. I think they're Kindle pages, so they're short, but like, yeah, yeah it's still like, oh short. my God. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah it's, and it's oh, nice too, because the, the plugin will like, uh, the or the, yeah, the Chrome plugin, it'll, it'll like generate most web pages into, into a actual like Mobi or whatever the dot .epub thing is. So it'll actually be like Kindle readable, which is nice. Right. Jeez. Yeah. I'm just, yeah, that's just nuts. Yeah. He's he yeah. said like he's setting himself up to be the guy, the expert. Oh yeah, that yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, when I tweeted about this, it was basically like this is going to be the document. Anytime someone says Linux for the next five years, I'm going to point him to this, just like I've been pointing him to the exactly. one dollar microcontroller thing yep. for the past right. However many two years, two years it's been out or whatever. Yeah, Jay's been on uh, embedded FM twice. Yep, I think I've talked about it on here. I was very mad that. Alicia and Chris asked him back again before we got him on here. So I, I actually had written to him yep. the, the way I knew that this article was coming as I wrote to him and I said, do not go back on embedded until you've been on the amp hour. And he's like, okay, <laughs> right. I have, I have an article coming out in August. I'll come yep. on then. And I said, that's great. So. Here we wow. Are <laughs> and, and he knows this too, because if you go to his website, there's like four links up the top. It has home about microcontrollers, which is the the microcontroller article you're talking yeah. about that everyone, yeah, you know, yeah. he explores 21 different microcontrollers all less than a dollar. Mm-hmm. And now yep. he's added this embedded Linux page. And yep. that is yep. that is the page we're talking about yep. now. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like, you know, holy that yeah, micro, it is the reference. The microcontroller page is amazing. Like I, that's how yep. I ended up, I used one of the recommended on there, the uh, EFM8 mm-hmm. LB1, the laser B. <laughs> yep. Nice little part. Yeah. I suspect, though, that the microcontroller page is possibly going to have longer longe- longevity than the embedded yeah, that, Linux page yeah, because that's a great point. There's, people are bringing out new modules all the time. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I, I actually tweeted this the other day because, you know, Raspberry Pi, it's on our list, isn't it? Uh, sure. Yeah, they yeah, have released right. their new uh, com- compute module four, right? Yep. It's been many years, I think, since they had released the last compute module. Yeah, I think it's been. I think many would be a two. I think two or two or three. I think. I yeah, don't know when yeah, it came two out. or three years yeah. or something. Anyway, if you don't know, the the compute module is just a a sort of more industrial stripped down version of the Raspberry Pi. So it doesn't have yep. headers. In this case, it's got a uh, high speed board to board interconnects that you know you can just plug this module into a you know it's yeah. designed to be used as an industrial controller. That's or, right. Yeah. You know, and it, it just works better. Article they talk about like that's this is how a lot of Raspberry Pi Foundation makes their money, right? That yes. higher volume, right. they crank out a lot of chips like or a lot of boards yep. like this. Well, I think didn't they say I read somewhere that like eighty percent of Raspberry Pis are used in industrial applications? I yeah, it's I, like I some uh, huge percentage. Yeah, it's some massive percentage. It's like yeah, it's, that's where most of them are used. Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's see. Oh, it says over half. Over over half of the seven million Raspberry Pi over units half, we sell. Right. Yep. Yeah. Seven million a year. Go. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. that's enormous volumes. And uh, yeah. yeah, that's not just going to hobbyists. You know, that's yeah. <laughs> They're using a metric crap ton of these in industrial applications. And if you're embedding it in, you're going to use this something like the compute module. And anyway, yeah. I, I I tweeted the interesting thing about this is that they specifically advertise right up front that it's going to have a, an eight year production life. Yes. Yes. Right. Yep. And that is one of the major things it's like we've discussed this over the years as well when mm-hmm. you design a chip into your system be it a microcontroller or a or an fpga or something like that right often like if you're a huge organization you know I, not not just the apples of the world but if you're some other even, huge i'd say small business know. too why not right <laughs> oh well yeah but you don't have the same you know if you're a small business right you're not going to be able to go to the manufacturer and say right i want it guaranteed in writing by your ceo that this part will be available for the next 12 years right right but i think that's 
that's more of a reason to try and chase down a module maker that will do that, right? You need to try and like bundle volume. Or maybe we're saying the same thing, actually. Yeah, but I'm going down to the chip level, right? Because oh, they're more. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll get into the chip versus system thing in a minute. Mm -hmm. But at, at the chip level, right, I've worked at companies where, yeah, we need a written guarantee from the company, from the board of directors, right, signed yep. by the yep. board of directors at, at TI or who, whoever it is, that yep. they will guarantee this part in production for 12 years because we have government contracts that stipulate that we have to be able to supply this for, you know, 10 or 12 years or something. That's and right. then these yeah. companies have to put their ass on the line and say, yes, we will produce it for the next 12 years. So Raspberry Pi are now coming out and saying um, they, they know that this is a thing in the industrial space, right? A lot of companies want this guarantee. Otherwise, they won't use your module, your 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 chip or, or whatever it is. That's right, yeah. Now, the issue, though, <laughs> with Raspberry Pi doing this is that, well, they're dependent on the suppliers of the components used on the module. Raspberry Pi might say, oh, yeah, we'll make this for the next eight years, but if all winner is, is an all winner processor, what is it? No, it's a, a Broadcom, right? So Broadcom say, oh, no, we're not going to make that part anymore or whatever happens, right? And there's no substitute or they can't easily engineer a, a direct equivalent substitute. Then, um, yeah, they're up shit creek. And That's right. you, yeah. the customer, are up shit creek as well. So... Anyway, it's good that they do that. Though. That is an argument, uh, I think, against against what Jay was saying, right? Like, yeah, you're paying more. Yeah, you're dealing with other stuff here. But you're basically getting that, you know, maybe volume, but really just some, like I said, you get to yell at someone, they're yelling at the, the chip vendor <laughs> because they might be bundling more volume. That's, what I, that's how I see it, at least. Right. So, yeah. But then it puts, of course, somebody at Raspberry Pi has to be in charge of uh, ensuring that eight-year supply mm -hmm. time right sure, so they've sure. actually got a, a tie usually um you know so you've got to tie into the obsolescence notices the end of life oh, notices yeah. for oh, all yeah. your parts right so if you want to do this properly if you're raspberry pi and you're making this module it needs to be somebody's job and you've got to have a system in place where every single part on that board has you know a, a ideally multiple vendors for a start mm -hmm. right yep. and then it's got to have and then you've got to tie into the vendor's systems so that you automatically get notified if there's an end of life notice, yep. right? Yep. So then you can do a last <laughs> nothing, buy, right? And then you can potentially- Nothing makes a uh, component engineer sweat more than a, a last time buy notice. <laughs> a you know? Last time buy notice, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then Raspberry Pi, then to guarantee to their customers- that they've, you know, they've actually promised this eight-year lifetime. They might have to buy, you know, if a chip goes, you know, and tits up tomorrow, they will have to buy. And if they can't engineer an equivalent, find an equivalent, they have to buy an eight-year supply of it. That's right. right? Yep. <laughs> I mean, because that's what they promised. So, you know, it's it's an interesting aspect of the industry that not a lot of people will ultimately get involved yeah. in. Yeah. But it's, right. it exists and it's vitally important. Yeah, I think it's... It's a grind. I mean, like, so I worked adjacent to the, the, when I was doing like, like, new, uh, sustaining engineering effectively, like we've talked about in the show. In components the obsolescence engineering. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seriously, we've, we, yeah. we had a component obsolescence yeah, yeah, yeah. engineer at our company. Yeah. It's like, right. and like know, the world's most glamorous title. Yeah. yeah. I know. It's really, it's rough. But, but like, yeah, it's super <laughs> valuable. And like, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, not great work, but it's it's very vital work, I think. So if you have a obsolescence engineer at your at your company, go and give them a hug, or you know <laughs> send them a, a message on. I guess no hugs right now. Uh, send them a message and say you I appreciate you, damn it. <laughs> so yeah, hug hug your component obsolescence engineer day. Is that the... Yeah, right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Anyway, yes, very important part of the business that not a lot of people give any thought to at all because we live in such a, you know, a fast, because everything you see, a lot of people forget, you know, every, every, all these consumer things are being churned yeah. over every, you know, 18 months tops or, or whatever, you know, every couple mm -hmm. of years. And people don't give a thought to, yep, people are still running Windows 3.11 <laughs> on a, yeah. you know, some, some industrial computer somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, that, that's a big deal. This is kind of, so just to tie it back to the Zephyr thing, this is kind of a reason. So say you are in a consumer environment, right? I am not, not most of the people use, using Zephyr will not be, but like if you were and you were, you were on a six month design cycle, it's like, Hey, six months from now, this chip's gone. I know it's gone. We're going to be under the next thing. You know, yeah, basically right. you're writing software at that higher level, firmware software at the higher level now 
basically you just go and develop the new board support package. You test it for all of the hooks that need to be tested for. And now you have the Blinky app should work the same on, you know, the AM3358 as the AM3359 and AM3360. You know what I mean? And like you can yeah. kind of start to abstract that stuff out. It doesn't always work and it's kind of, you know, it's its own tough work, but that's the reason to do it, I think, as an example. Right. Yeah. I think there's probably an argument in the other direction too. Like sometimes, I forget what it was, I was reading something earlier this week and it was like sometimes people, I think maybe it was a Hacker News thread, but sometimes people like over optimize too early and, uh, you know, try and make things too abstract, right? Yes. Depends on the, on the, the task, right? So like you were saying, like if it's a super tiny little task and whatever, yeah, throw, you know, throw a microcontroller at it, write bare metal code, mm -hmm. do this, yep. you know, small thing. So we had a, what was the link on here? I just saw something for like a, there is a, where did it go? Oh man, it's gone. It was on our list, but it was like a, you know, like little tiny, you know, tiny AVR processor that's doing this one little thing. Oh, here we go. Bare metal programming yeah. and tiny, tiny AVR zero microcontrollers, right? There's an OMSLO link that we'll link in. You know, that might be the right solution, you know? And, and like Dave always says, it's like right tool for the job kind of thing of like, that might be it. And you get to the next thing in three years and you can't buy that part anymore. Okay, rewrite it for the other, you know, the next part that's you <laughs> right. know, available, right? It's like, <laughs> and that's just part of your, that's that's how you're doing sustaining engineering is you're just rewriting mm -hmm. it every three years. It might not be the most like software-y kind of thing, but it might be the right the right solution for your company if you're small, if you're, you know, not using much things, yeah. Right, of course. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Are you are you distracted right now, Dave? Are you distracted by the fact that I tweeted back at you because you tweeted a link during in the middle of our program? <laughs> I don't, what's wrong with you? There you go. I must be excited. He tweeted in the middle of recording the app. <laughs> this friggin' guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he's right. Sorry, he's right. I didn't see. That's okay. Oh boy. Uh, All yeah. right. <clears throat> Uh, what else is on here? Oh, I thought I was surprised you didn't see. I could tell that. So if people don't, haven't seen Dave's video, he goes through his, his office and he's like digging through all this stuff. Oh, oh my no, God. come on. <laughs> you have so much. The, here's the, here's how I know that you have so much stuff on your plate right now and that you're so busy is that you did not see this link. New Zealand startup to build first long range commercial wireless power transmitter. This is this, this is old. This is old. This is old. Oh, okay. I didn't think. Yep. Wait. Oh, August yes, 10, yes, the, the August, August 10. Yeah. It, it, everyone oh, okay. was all over this when it came. Got I, it. Okay. So I'm behind this it. I'm, when it was all got that. it. Got yeah, it. you're behind it. No, yeah. it's like, yeah, there's a company called M. If it's not on the subreddit, it doesn't exist, you know? Uh, it, <laughs> yeah, there's a company called N, M Rod, and they've got some New Zealand <laughs> right. government contract to do wireless power. And it's like, yeah, no, no, you know, it's going to change the world. Right. You know, and no. I get it. It's like electromagnetic, and it's probably up on a pole. So and, like, and it's a EM resonance system. It's probably rod. a resonance system. Yeah, as well. great. But like, know. that's pretty close yeah. to Nimrod. You know, like, and I know that Nimrod actually means hunter, and like, it's not always. It hasn't always been a, uh, <laughs> you know, a, yeah. No, it's just yes, it works in quote marks, but it's right. not going to be revolutionary, right? It's just no. At the bottom of the article, it says two point four gigahertz. And it's like, that seems like a really dumb frequency to be transmitting power over. It's like, yeah, of course it'll work, but like, that's how far? because it's beamed. Yeah, it's you've how, got to use efficient? it in the middle of nowhere and it's beamed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then they, well, they say so, microwave somewhere else too. It's just, yeah, this is not a great article for it, but. Uh, no, no. No, there's been better ones over the when it okay, came okay. out. Everyone was talking about it and everyone was tweeting. It. I, okay. I'm sure it was discussed on the forum as well. It was like, mm -hmm, and everyone's mm -hmm. just going, yeah, yawn, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. But they were making big, you know, uh, grandiose marketing claims. and Of course. Of course. Yeah, of course they do. So, yeah. yep. Next. Uh, this was an interesting, interesting one. So Bear Conductive, I don't know, do you know who they are, the Bear Conductive folks? No, I don't. I But, but I've seen this. Okay. Yeah. So uh, they do like conductive paint to, and then they route it to a circuit board. Uh, so Stephen, Ch 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 oh, Smith. I think they might have. Um, yeah. I I just didn't recognize the name. I think they might have been the one who sent. I think I've got some of this stuff. Yeah, that that seems right. And, and they were very targeted in the maker market, but they kind of branched out from that a little bit as well. And okay, to do some other right. some other things. I I think I said Stephen's name wrong. I'm sorry about that. D S Smith or <laughs> Stephen D S or whatever. Yeah, try and edit and post. Uh, but anyways, he's been on the show before, and I'll link that into. Uh, and so he works there. And, uh, but they talk about why they still have an office. And I thought it was kind of just an interesting, like, 
okay, so we're in the middle of COVID and it's like, how the hell do you do hardware? You know, this is kind of like the, the thing that we've been talking about a little bit, but like I, you know, you're remote, I'm remote, whatever, we're all remote, but some offices it's tough, you know, like, and like, how do you actually do this? And so Bear Conductive wrote about like, Hey, we still have an office. We go in, we're safe, all this other things, but just like the importance of a centralized location when you are working on a physical product, I, I just, I feel for people that are doing it, but I, I don't know. I don't know how you do it otherwise. You know, like if you just had send everyone gear, I guess, I, I don't know. Home labs are getting better and better. Do you have thoughts on uh, hardware remote versus uh, in person building up home offices in labs and stuff? It depends on where you're, uh, well, what sort of stuff you're working on. I mean, you know, like anyone worth yeah. their salt is going to have their own home lab and you can get things done, right? You can power sure. up your prototypes. You can test it with your scope and, you know, mold and logic analyze, you know, whatever. DMM, power supply, small stuff. Buy it on Amazon, right? Yeah. yeah. And you've probably got the development environment there, you know. Yeah, J-Link programmer or whatever, right? So you can probably do most stuff. It's only like the bigger, harder mm-hmm stuff it's like but uh, like i don't think it's that like i'm looking at their the bear conduct is former this is their pre and there's a photo of their pre-covid 19 office space and it's like oh my god that's hideous i couldn't imagine working in an environment like that it is, it's just like it's an open office plan is what david's saying open yes, office plan and they're just like they've got one monitor monitors. And, and and they're like sitting facing each other like yeah. no engineer wants to work in a in <laughs> in that sort of environment have you ever done it uh no oh kind of at altium was kind of like that but but we had the 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 low walls like you know Mm -hmm. you could you could see other people but you at least had the low dividing wall if if you know what i'm talking about you know yeah yeah it's like a half cube yeah and which is very popular in software circles um because altium was you know almost entirely a software company Right, mm-hmm. so us poor hardware team had to, you know, <laughs> right. us poor four four guys sitting facing each other, going, "What the, you know, what the hell is this?" You know, right. like, no, please I'll, just. I'll, I'll, let I'll, me. I'll send you a chat. I'll send you a chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's, it's uh, oh god, no, 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 yeah, no, no. Join no. startups. You know, obviously, I was in a startup. I was in a startup for about a year, yeah. and uh, I think this is like this. You know, you walk around a WeWork. You know, I hate WeWork with a passion. But this is the, this is what people think of as a startup, right? This is bog standard. Yeah. We work you're in a glass cube. You're facing your coworkers. Everybody sees everybody like no privacy in a glass cube. That's luxury. That's luxury. Well, I mean, no, 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 no. The whole, the whole office is one big glass cube. Oh, that's the what I'm whole saying. office is one yeah, big glass cube. Have you, have you yeah. been in a WeWork before? <laughs> I've, uh, no, but I've been in similar spaces. Oh, okay. Yeah. They, just, we ugh. don't have, I don't think we have WeWork here. I don't think it's a thing here. Oh, I'm sure you do. We've, we've, we've got similar ones. I don't know if we actually have WeWork. I'm, I'm sure you're sorry. I'm sorry. I'll, allow me to correct myself. I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Before that went tits up. That's right. Yeah. No, they are in Sydney. Reworked. Yeah. And there you yeah, go. Exactly. But, you know, I yeah. like that's in the startup y software wanker idea space, you know? Like, well, and so this is so, uh, you know, there are even yes, more expensive Yes, they do have two. Sydney. Four, six, eight, nine in Sydney. They they That's do a lot. Nine. That's but, a lot of space. But I am nowhere near. Like I'm no. Right. I very rarely go into the Sydney CBD. No, yeah. Like I'm just yeah. not there. Right. No. Yeah. So yep. No, Dave. It's for the it's for the youngs. You were you were yeah. moving towards the olds. You know. Yep. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So I think that is an interesting. You know, like so spe- specifically for like you know if you're in Central London where they're this office they're talking about is like yeah that's you're trying to pack people in because you're trying to get more people and more done in a really, really expensive real estate area. Okay, fine. But now this is them reevaluating for this kind of thing. Could they do it remotely? Yeah, probably. But what they're talking about is like, you know, like Mm. the bear conductive is not a simple product, but it's, you know, it's not like a, it's not a thing controlling an F 35 either. Right. Right. So like there are, there are different levels of like how, how much, how much specialized equipment you need. What I think about is so like, I started saying like, well, you know, you could probably send everyone home with some equipment or whatever. And someone brought it to me like, look, I have a $50,000 VNA on my desk. I am not allowed to bring that home. Or maybe I am allowed to bring that home, but, you know, my coworker uses it, you know, my other coworker uses it yeah, sometimes but- and it just becomes really tough. Yeah, but in most cases, it would actually work out, being fairly generalized here, but in most cases, it'd probably work out cheaper to buy everybody their own home lab 
than mm. to rent yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. a space, right? Than to rent a big space for everyone and all the amenities and all the electricity costs and all the, mm -hmm. you know, everything that goes along with renting a large office, commercial office space, right? It's all, sure. it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it wouldn't oh, surprise I think, me I think you're, if it's cheaper. I think you are dead on. I think that's exactly where the, the gener generic office world is going post COVID, right? I mean, I think there will yep. be centralization, but I think that companies are going to fall in love. They're like, oh, wow, we, we really don't have to pay much right now. Let's, we're going to yeah. share, we're going to hot desk. We're going to, you know, do all these other things. We're going to be at a, right. a co-working space, whatever. We're going to, you know, we're, use a WeWork, whatever. And it's like, yeah, okay. That makes, that makes sense. Yeah. A little bit less so maybe for hardware, but. I, I tweeted yeah. this the other day. We have hit peak secretary. Peak secretary. <laughs> What's that? Peak secretary. It means that because the other day I was getting my car service, right? So I was at the local, uh -huh. you know, car dealership. Yeah, oil change kind thing, of thing. Right? Yeah. Right, no. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, no, sorry. Um, oh, man. Electric car, right? Oil electric. change. Chris, you're so one year ago. Had to have its 1,500 kilometer, <laughs> you know, checkup, right? To yeah. keep the warranty, yeah. right. right? So anyway, there's not much you can do to check it. It's right. like, right. have the wheels fallen off? No. Right, Tick. right. <laughs> you know, right. it's like. There's still yeah. a battery and it's monitoring right, yep. itself. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Guess it's we'll plug good. in the computer to the and other we, computer. We updated the maps for you, you know. Woo. Okay, You know, yeah. Anyway. Uh, the maps in that are pretty shit, by the way. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I just no. Throwback to really, really old uh, episodes of the Amp Hour. What I said, we should just have like a interface, and you plug in a tablet there, or I guess it would be wireless now. But like, why do you have? I mean, I know why they have it, but I've talked to people at Tesla. Like, why do you have like this specialized screen? It's like, why not make it a removable module? And they're like, well, we don't want to have third party people doing it. We don't want to have yeah, no, all these other things. Abs you know, like oh, absolutely, there are reasons, absolutely. of course, but like, yep. That means you're a couple yeah, but years I can like I the thing is I would be much happier if they integrated a proper brand into it. Like, give mm. me a Garmin, right? Give me a mm. Garmin map. They should pay for the license for Garmin Got instead yeah, of yeah, you yeah. know or Tom Tom or at least you know one of the big players instead sure. of doing some I don't know some weird ass yeah home bloody one thing. that's you know yeah. yeah that's useless here in Australia. It doesn't know half the yeah, stuff. Right. You know, it's like yeah. Anyway. That's beside the point. I'm just imagining Dave getting lost at a menu and like <laughs> he turns on the navigation. He's like, howdy, partner. Take a ride up top. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Dave, if you want me to do the voice for your navigation system, I'll do it. I'll do it. I did a voice. I did Dave voice for, I, th I think it was Garmin way back in the day. I can't remember. I, I uploaded it somewhere and quite a few people downloaded it and put it on their <laughs> GPSs. Oh, my God. So yeah, they've got David. There's a few people out there with Dave. Are voice you an ultimate genius. EEV blog fanboy? We have a product <laughs> <Yeah>. for you. <laughs> I should try and redo that if it's like because yeah. they had like a tool you could download and you could actually you know you just had to say all these key phrases you know there were like a hundred key phrases sure. or something. Right. Turn right, and, turn left. Yeah, yeah turn, turn left, and right. Like, you know, turn chuck left. a Yui at the servo. You know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and anyway, so peak secretary is like. Got it. Right. So I was talking to the secretary there and, you know, front, front, day, peak, peak receptionist, right? So yeah, right. You know, front, front desk receptionist, right? And, yeah, I think um, peak, peak secretary might've been like yep. in the like late 80s, uh, sorry, early 80s. Yeah, rather, yeah. 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 But I think, I think you're right. Front, front desk for sure. It's like, yeah. like oh, uh, you're going to be a tablet right? in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Your job's gone <laughs> to a telepresent, to a. Yeah. yeah, yeah maybe. Anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To a Johnny Cab, you know. Johnny Cab, that's uh, right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, Johnny receptionist. Anyway, so yeah, and like the conversation led to commercial office property and um, how, yeah, like she was totally on top of, yeah, everyone's downsizing their commercial oh, totally, properties. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I know X amount of people who are downsizing their commercial. This the, the front desk receptionist knows about downsizing of commercial properties happening, and it's a thing. I think, it's like well, I think Dave, that statement is a is a uh, is a truism. Uh, I think that you know, front desk people yep. and you know assistants are like the <laughs> they're the people that know everything because yes, they exactly. have to. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. But you know, it's yeah. anyway. And if you're young and you're I, listening I to this and you're an engineer, be nice to that person because holy <laughs> crap, well they they will ruin your life if they want to, but also they can make your life so much better. So and they control the company credit card. So. View the best gossip <laughs> and they spread the best gossip. You know, it's well, like, I didn't yeah. mean gossip. I just mean like they're like gatekeepers, but like yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes in a good exactly. way, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Anywho.
yeah, no, that I think you're right about the commercial real estate, though. I think it's, it's like very, for sure it's you know, yeah, it's it's gonna be really it doesn't interesting mean to prices are going to plummet for those no. who like like people say, oh, why didn't I I negotiate my lease in my hundred if my lease was up in my hundred square meter space? Why didn't I negotiate re, renegotiate oh, my yeah, lease there? Yeah, yeah. It's like no, I'm not going to magically get it for half, right? <laughs> like mm-hmm. I'd be lucky if I got a five percent discount. Right, yeah. it's just right because they like, got they got a mortgage on that thing too. Yeah, yeah. you're not gonna like. No, they they got a mortgage, and there's various reasons, and there's various differences. You know, Sydney's here, and Sydney's different to uh, the US, where they have you know c- c- CMBSs, which is commercial mortgage backed securities, and all mm. that. I uh, you know I won't go into the sure. won't turn sure, it into sure. a real estate podcast, but there are huge differences, and you know the prices aren't going to suddenly plummet. Right. Right, because these these properties are tied up in people's super funds. They're tied up in uh, C CMBSs, oh, yeah. and they're tied up in other uh, packages. So they're not just suddenly going to plummet. So yeah, yeah, and they can't just suddenly lower the rent. Right, it's it's just right. not. Yeah, you might pick up some bargains here or there, but in general, no, it's not going to happen. Um, the market is still relatively strong here, so to speak. But everyone is downsizing. So it's like, you know, turtles all the way down. You wouldn't want to be the turtle on top. You know? That's right, yeah. Because or the, the yeah. person who rents to the turtle on top. <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. Or, yeah. yeah. Oh, boy, anyway, yeah. So, yeah, it's like, you know, I've, I've downsized, of course. I'm, of course. I'm recording this from my new you, downsized Dave is, lab. Dave is sweating. He is sweating his move. All right. He's, he's going to make it, but it's going to be it's going to be a close one. Yeah? I'm almost okay. there. I'm okay. almost there. Man, you it have so much some... stuff. I, I like, didn't even realize... Like, oh yeah. man, it just is so massive. You need to hire a personal, like Marie Kondo. Does this DMM bring me joy? Does joy. This, does this oscilloscope bring me joy? Like, but I, don't know, I also I tweeted this in your reply to this on Twitter somewhere or someone's yeah, reply. Yeah, yeah. Does it bring too, me man, joy? Yeah. What if the answer to every item is yes? Then you got to buy more space. <laughs> then then my you've friend. got problems. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a thing. Like I well, I mean You better call your psychologist. You know what you know would be useful for you. You know what would be useful for you. Here's a product that you should build that would be very useful for you. Yes. It plugs into the mains. It's in between yep. your 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 meter or your DMM, your scope, whatever, and the mains. And all it does is a little ticker and it just says, Oh, I've used this one hour this month or one hour this year. Yep. Because I bet some of them it's zero. I bet a lot of them it's zero, you know? And then like, Oh yeah, this is the, this is, I mean, so this leads back to the, the, you know, having a home lab versus, you know, having just equipment in general, right? It's like mm. you are guaranteed to need that one thing as soon as you get rid oh, of it. Oh yeah. As, as soon as you get rid of it, Murphy's. Yeah. That, that is the base Murphy's level fear as well. Reporting. Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, so totally. I'm actually, I didn't even tell you this. I'm downsizing too. Like I'm getting rid of my desk at M hub. Cause I just don't go in there anymore. Right. That's the space that yeah. I'm still going to be like a shop member, but like I had a yep. cart there and I have a desk there and I just have yeah. so much crap that I'm now shoving into this home that I live in. And it's, you know, and my wife's just like, oh, okay. Well, I was clearing out my much. bunker cause I need more storage space in my sure, bunker. Sure. Right. And I'm, you know, clearing some instruments off the shelf and I'm going, Oh, a PAL vector, um, uh, video analyzer. It's like, you know, a huge, big, old school, you know, in, in vector, um, you know, analyzer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, uh, oh God. It's like, yeah, I can, you know, and my mind just goes through of all the possible things that I could do with it. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh yeah, I might need that one day. And ultimately yeah. I, I did decide, no, that one's been given away. That's, yeah. I think know, that's, it's gone. that's a good one. No, right. right. It's, you know, it's an old PAL video thing. It's like, but yeah, I might use it in the next 1,000 videos, right? Sure. Sometime in the next 1,000. Oh, I go, oh, I shouldn't have thrown that away. I need, you know, it would have been I nice feel like one that. thing that would be helpful, like mentally, would be one, I mean, you always could buy it back on eBay, right? You can buy it for someone else. Yeah, exactly. Two, yeah. you could always rent it. Or three, you know a bunch of people yeah. around. You could probably be right. You know, I could probably get it. a loaner. Yeah. That enough enough should be like enough to get you past the because like, does anyone need more than like one scope? I mean, yes, some people do, but like yep. the majority of people, like you need a scope, maybe. No. You need a DMM, yep. definitely. You need a power supply, definitely. I've you you know how many scopes I've got, right? Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> right. I I I I have currently put three on my benches here. I put two main ones. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I've got a smaller one that just moves around. 
right? Yeah. I've got the small little key sight that just, you know, I love yeah. that little I thing that moves it. around. It looks really good on camera. It's just, you know, one that I can physically remove around. The other two, I've decided, no, they're going to be, I'm going to have two permanent set up on the bench, on the big bench, mm -hmm. and yep. that's yep. it. Use everything them when you use else them. is, yep. yep. Yeah. I everything else great. is, well, e either go in or is stored. Well, yeah. So, right, right, right. you know, yep. Mm. Yeah, it's well because you know. no one needs 20 scopes you know yeah, yeah. right and we are very it's, lucky you know right. we both get stuff sent to us it's very yeah. nice of these companies to do that i think that's not the normal case but like yeah. there is always that fear of like what if i need it right like, well just, uh, well that's the yeah. thing for me i've always said and i actually have this on my page it said i need to hoard and collect this equipment because i do equipment review comparisons right where i compare one scope one brand to another mm -hmm. right and it's like I I often need to do that on a whim. Oh, yeah, and sure, it's sure. like, well, if I don't keep that Tektronix scope, how am I going to compare the Tektronix brand? It's like, yeah, well, yeah. you know, but I but I never use the Tektronix otherwise. Right. right? You don't need to keep it out. And that's it's the like, thing. right? No, it's like no, I don't need to keep it out. But should I keep it stored or should I just get rid of it? Right. Mm, right. It's like, oh, I don't know. That's it's tough, like, man. You know? Yeah. It's very tough. Yeah, the comparison so, thing is, yeah, this, you, you have some unique constraints, I'd say, you know. I've I've got some pretty unique requirements, yeah, yeah. <laughs> running a video blog. So, you know, yeah. your mileage may vary, but, uh, yep. Yeah. Anyway, so, but I, I'm, I'm, stuff is going. I, I now, and now have a pile of stuff that is That's being good. given away. You know, I'm going to call Great. people in this week and, well, this next week, because I've got one week left. I've got, like, until, like, next Friday to get the heck out oh, of there. Yeah. So it's like, you know, yeah. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Oh not boy. scary. It was just like three months ago. I was saying, oh, I'm sure I was telling you like three months. Yeah, oh, I better yeah. start three months ahead. Right. Because oh, yeah. I don't want to leave it to the last minute. And and I kind of right. sort of did. Right. I was, you know, three months ago, I started moving benches into here. I, I shot the odd, you know, video in here and stuff like that. And it's like, mm, still doing it. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, geez. Anyway. Ah, <laughs> yep. So head down, bum up for the next week. Yep. Engineers always get it done on the deadline, though. That's right. That's right. We know this. It's a universal fact. Right. I mean, you would probably stretch this out for years if you didn't have a deadline. Oh, yeah. So. No, totally. If we didn't have an actual deadline where somebody's yeah. going to boot you out, you know. Yep. And yep. Yeah. And I want my $10,000 back. Sure. Too. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. There's $10,000 bond on that place. Right. Yeah. That's ten thousand yeah. dollars dead money. That that's right? like a uh, bond is like a deposit. Is that right? It's it, it's like a deposit. So so you don't trash the place. You know. So, oh right. Yep. There you go. Don't so, trash the place. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I want my damn money back. <laughs> Thank you. That, that'll right, be a nice boost. You can go nice buy boost, more scopes you know? with it, man. Come on. Go yeah. buy more scopes. <laughs> exactly. No, although I am, I'll you know I'll give a tour when I'm done, but I've, you know, like I had instruments like scattered all out before, like all around the place before. Now I have just two shelves of instruments that are permanently set up there and I'm not going to move them. Damn it. Are they super glued to the shelf, Dave? Well, no, but I might, I might put in K like <laughs> uh -huh. I might go cable tie crazy. Right. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. do various it things. So it's like, yeah. yeah. So like, cause I've like, cause I'm, <laughs> I've said this many times over years is I, can't as i couldn't the excuse i made myself is i couldn't keep a properly set up lab because i was always moving the equipment mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. to the bench so i could get it in the shot right it was all about you know the, the camera shot the framing right mm -hmm. it was like no i'm going to change i'm going to change the way i do things i'm going to bring the product to the bench where i have the instruments i'm not going to bring the instrument to the blank bench right, where i'm right. shooting the video I mean, is there anything sadder than walking into a uh, a workshop that has like you know like the pegboard and then like the person's like outlined all the tools and then oh, none of the tools right. are actually on the pegboard and, and not, none of the tools are on the pegboard? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just imagining this with like the outline of scopes and yep. DMMs and everything else, and it's yep. just empty. Yep, that's why we'll I see. think I'm going to start cable tie stuff. You know, cable tying stuff down. So at least I have to pick, get out a pair of side cutters to. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, you need yeah. The, that little. Yep. Thing. That little extra barrier there. To, you know. <laughs> so yeah no but i'm you know it's it's i can see the light at the end of the tunnel i'm gonna i've ordered some custom storage things like custom wood i, I tweeted out this uh website that allows me to build these custom wood storage things so i've got these pull out trays i've bought a whole bunch of trays and i design mm. rather than just like sit them on a makeshift shelf i went no i'm gonna build proper custom 
like wood shells for these things so they just fit in there and you know and they all just i have a lot of things to move and to do i'm gonna go build some shelves uh, (laughs) yep yep so i just um, custom ordered these and yeah it was great Hmm. well i haven't they haven't turned up yet they're still being manufactured but you know got it just local you know local company that you know they've got these like you can just choose your different type of thing that you want you know different type of cabinet or, or whatever it is you want and then just tell them the dimensions and then they put it into their CNC machine and it just magically spits out this fully customized cabinet. You know, it's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, we'll, we'll look, we'll look forward to the, uh, to the walkthrough when you're, when you're ready for it. To the walkthrough when I'm done and fully set up. Yep. Yep. Although yeah, my, my lights are done. My lights are finished. I'm happy with that. So good. Yeah. And benches are all, you know, I'm going to get new ESD material. Speaking of which, we can segue in this in the last second. I posted a video from nineteen early nineteen eighties. Oh yeah, I didn't get a watch a chance to watch this yet, but yep. it looks cool. It's a yeah. it's an hour and twenty minutes of the guy who invented. Oh, hang on, I'll pull it up. You've you you saw it though. You actually saw. The I haven't watched it yet. No, no, no. I, I mean, I no, saw it, but the, you haven't the watched link, it, but you saw the. Yeah, link. no. Yeah, yeah. And it's to um. Oh god, I got to get to my second channel. Unbelievable. Bloody YouTube. I've got too many channels. So many what? channels. What? What? <laughs> it's on my second channel. <laughs> it's on your second channel. Oh, that's what you're saying. I was just like clicking the link on the subreddit, you know. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah Dan Anderson um, from Anderson FX. Um, he's the guy who invented the pink poly ESD bag, yeah. right? You know, this is back in the 1960s. It had to do with rockets blowing up and everything. And anyway, mm-hmm. he's, he gives this lecture of what is ESD. It's one of the best what if and and practical demos of ESD you'll you'll ever see. Yeah. Although he's a classic old school character. I'll just leave it at that. So it. It, it's almost a stand up comedy routine with lots of innuendo and all sorts of stuff in it. It's, you know, Got it. he's, yeah. he's really old school. So, and he even smokes, you know, he's like, it's unheard of these days, but here he is smoking in this lecture, right? You know, it's like, it's absolutely hilarious. Oh, I thought Um, it was a piece of chalk he's holding. He's holding a cigarette. No, no, he's holding a cigarette. Yeah, and he's just like, it's it's almost a stand-up comedy routine. And anyway, he's a real character. He's not around anymore, but uh, yeah, somebody sent me this. And originally comes from an old uh, Betamax tape and it's him explaining ESD. Anyway. Okay, that's great. That's a great watch. It's absolutely hilarious. But yeah. Okay. Great. And you posted another uh, video too, the 345 kilovolt substation walkthrough. I haven't watched that yet, but that looks yes, yes. Scary. And there's a a follow up to that, uh, which is the lower voltage section mm. of the substation as well. If you're interested, I I haven't watched the lower voltage one yet. But yeah, mm. it's this guy who works at a high voltage, you know, a 330 kilovolt substation, and he takes you yeah. through every, you know, step by step walkthrough of the yeah. substation. So if you're into step your by power step, stuff, but no touch, really no touch, no touchy, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, don't get too close. Yeah, that's right. No, yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's just very interesting. I've never seen a walkthrough before, so yeah, great. That was fascinating. So there you go. Anyway, our oh, MPL is well and truly up. It is. All right, man. Well, good luck with the move. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you next week. Catch you next time. Today's episode was produced by Analog Life LLC and was brought to you by well, some view. Join the other Amp Hour patron sponsors at Patreon.com/slash The Amp Hour. You'll get a Discord invite to chat directly with the listeners of the show. A special thanks today to our corporate sponsor, Vignette.